So um, I, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, we, we've talked in previous um, webinars about teleportation, so I'm not going to uh, talk much about that, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about quantum secure direct communication. So this is another class of um, a transmission methods that we can use on a quantum network. So how does it, how is this distinguished from other pro protocols? So um, in these, in these methods uh, for Q uh, QSDC, we, we do not require pre-share keys. So this distinguishes us from QK QKD. Um, the quantum state transmission does not re require auxiliary cl classical information. Now we still use classical information in the protocol, but the reconstruction of the state itself does not require classical information. So this is unlike teleportation. Another property we have is that eavesdropping can be detected in real time. So I'll just go over a couple of protocols uh, related um, in this class of transmission protocol. So uh, this protocol we'll call the efficient protocol. So in this protocol, Alice, we have two, two parties, Alice and Bob. Alice initially prepares a set of entangled states that are different Bell states here. And then uh, Alice transmits uh, um, set B, uh, which is uh, the first, you know, the right hand side of this entanglement uh, to Bob. Um, and then uh, uh, she sends some test positions uh, over to Bob. So what we're going to do is some of these qubits we're going to use for testing the quantum bit error rate and others we're going to save to be our actual data. So after this, um, this second transmission, uh, Alice and Bob both do uh, measurements, and these are uh, like bell type measurements that we mentioned earlier with the C CHSH bound. So they do uh, these these types of measurements and and look at the quantum bit error rate. So if this is acceptable, they know that um, their systems are still maintaining a quantum like behavior, and therefore we know that there's not been any inner inner um, interaction of the data by uh, an attacker. So this first round. Uh, if the quantum bit error rate uh, is acceptable, um, then Alice transmits the second set to Bob, um, and then also some test positions. So we're doing another test of a subset of the data. If and if this is if the second round uh, quantum bit error rate is acceptable, then Bob uh, then de uh, decodes uh, since these are Bell states. Bob can do a Bell state measurement to decode which uh, of the Bell states each pair was and therefore and thereby decode Alice's data. Um, and so um, so there, then, then Bob has uh, the, the uh, securely received the information that Alice has encoded. And um, by using the, the quantum bit error error checks, they've verified that, that there, there's not been any interaction of this data by an adversary. Uh, so this is a visual depiction of this protocol. So um, on the left, we have Alice with all of these bell states. Um, and Bob has no qubit, uh, none of the qubits initially. And then in step two, Alice, is, Alice sends, um, you know, one half of, the, of all of these pairs to Bob. In step three, they both do some test measurements and they check their measurement statistics. If everything looks good, then Alice sends the other half of the Bell states to Bob. They do some more tests. And so these, these dashed lines are indicating, you know, these measurements on the test positions uh, to validate that there's not been any interception of the data. And so at the end, Bob is left with, you know, the larger part, um, you know, most of the qubits here, and he can perform a Bell state measurement on these to decode uh, these data. So each color represents kind of a different value Alice is uh, trying to send. So that protocol, the efficient protocol used um, entangled pairs. So we have another protocol, a QSDC protocol called DLO4, um, which uses single photon states. Um, so again, we're sending from Alice to Bob, but in this case, Bob initiates uh, the protocol by sending a stream of uh, qubits that are, that are encoded in different bases. So uh, he can send a zero or a one in the computational basis or, or a plus or minus state in X basis. Um, so uh, Bob sends this stream over to Alice. Alice chooses some subset of these as test positions. Um, and then, uh, sends uh, which positions she chose back over to Bob and which bases uh, she used. Um, and so then um, Bob can can check uh, the quantum bit error rate um, because she sends her measurement values and Bob was the originator of the data. So he can tell if, if the statistics uh, uh, are correct. Um, 
And then if everything looks good, Bob issues continue co command. And with the rest of the data, the non-test data, Alice modulates it with uh, either a, a Y gate or, or a no op, essentially. Um, and then sends um, that modulated data back over to Bob. Bob checks the, the bit error rate on the test on some test positions again. And then um, Bob can then decode the data since Bob was the originator. He can see the effect that Alice had on the data and thereby decode Alice's data. So here's a visual uh, diagram of, what, of this protocol. So Bob is on the right, Alice is on the left. Bob sends a stream of photons across the channel. Uh, the beam splitter randomly selects a set of uh, test positions and, and measures those, and sends the results back over the classical channel to Bob. If Bob determines that the error rate is acceptable, he sends the continued message back to Alice. Uh, Alice had meanwhile stored the non-test positions in an optical delay. Uh, when she gets the go-ahead, she then flips the switch to use these uh, qubits for information encoding, sends them back over to Bob, and then they do the qubit, you know, error test again, and then Bob has the, has the data that Alice wanted to send, assuming uh, no eavesdropping occurred.